Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Bowling University studio from the International Bowling Campus here in Arlington, Texas. I'm Bart Berger, and I'll be your host for this edition of the Bowling University Tuesday Morning Profit Break. Thank you for joining us. The Tuesday Morning Profit Break is an opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce cost, enrich yourself, your team, and your business. Welcome to our new viewers and welcome back to those of you that are joining us again. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day to join us. We have another great show ready to share with you today. So grab your coffee or your favorite morning beverage and let's get started improving your profitability. Today, we are excited to have with us from the Bowling University team, Mr. John Karabatsis, or uh, JK, as we uh, affectionately refer to him here at the campus. And JK is a uh, industry vet veteran with over 30 years of experience. But I would like to uh, point out that uh, during JK's time with the Brunswick Recreation Center Group, they owned and operated over 100 bowling centers around the country. And JK served in the role of National Food and Beverage Manager. So he is uniquely qualified to share with you the F&B operations from all different type of uh, menu development and, and operation and business models there. So this morning, JK is going to spend a few minutes with us on the critical topic of menu engineering. Engineering. In fact, uh, here at the campus, menu engineering is such a large topic, we divide it up into two segments. One is analytics for a profitable menu, and the other is designing a profitable menu. And this morning, JK is going to feature uh, focus on the first part, that analytics to a profitable menu. So uh, JK, thank you for being with us this morning and uh, sharing your insight on this critical topic. Thank you, Bart. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so let's jump into it really quickly. Um, your food and beverage operation is becoming a more and more critical component to your overall profitability. So regardless of whether you're operating traditional or bowling entertainment or a family entertainment center, nowadays food is important to that guest experience. How you manage and how you monitor and how you control that is going to be important to your bottom line. So today we want to talk about menu engineering. So what is menu engineering and why is it important? First of all, it, what it basically is, it's an analytical tool. It's going to help you determine your most profitable and popular items. It's going to help you maximize your labor. It's going to improve your product consistency and it will help you reach and maintain a targeted cost of goods. When you do all that, your bottom line increases. There's a lot of work that goes into it up front, but once you set it up, it kind of keeps going on its own. Very little maintenance. So that's what it is. Why is it important? Well, look at, let's look at the money. Okay, if you look at uh, the last industry benchmarking survey that we've done in 2019, traditional bowling centers, an average revenue in food and beverage was over $200,000. Just a 2% variance savings on the bottom line is over four grand. 5% is over 10,000. From what I've seen over the years, two to 5% is not uncommon. That is easily achieved, the savings by doing a program like this easily. Uh, on the other side of the spectrum of bowling entertainment or family entertainment centers, look at the difference there. 68% is other revenue. So a typical food and beverage operation does over $460,000. That's really a lot of money to them too. So anywhere from nine to $23,000 just by bringing your bottom line, your costs down by two to 5%. And that's just product costs, not, not even labor. So that's what's in it for you. That's why it's important. And that's why it's something you should consider doing. Your menu is important to your business, obviously. And it, what your menu does is it drives a lot of it drives all the functions in that operation what you purchase how you purchase it how often you purchase it the production that goes into it meaning you know is it something that is more uh, frozen that's that's quick serve or is it different ingredients where your kitchen has to put them together so what's the production that's involved the inventory how much inventory do you keep in there do you have a massive menu with a whole bunch of items are you controlling your inventory your pricing your price has a whole lot to do as you know with your cost of goods is it appropriate for your market is it appropriate for that item okay the cost of goods obviously your menu is going to drive that your menu you mix your overall cost of goods is dependent upon what you're selling. If you sold all the same item, then that's what you could expect your cost of goods to be. But as you mix it up, if you sell a lot of high cost items, you're probably going to run a higher cost. If you sell a lot of low cost items, you're going to run a lower cost. That's going to determine your profitability. It's okay to run higher cost items. What's important is for you to understand 
what your menu is, what it should be, you monitor it so it's where you expect it to be. So don't be scared sometimes by a higher cost of goods. Really what this is all about is how much money comes down to the bottom line. That's what you're concerned about and that's what menu engineering will help you with. So there's really four steps to, to menu efficiency and profitability. We're going to go through them here quickly and these are the four things you need to do. I don't want to oversimplify it, there's a lot of work involved, but first thing you absolutely have to do is to develop standard recipes. You have to have that. Um, if you don't have standard recipes, you're not going to be able to uh, uh, to understand what your true cost is. And you're going to, from those, you're going to establish what your cost of goods targets and your profitability goals are. So as you're developing your standard recipes, keep in mind, generally speaking, again, it depends upon the type of business that you're in, uh, Cost of goods usually runs 25 to 35 percent, some, somewhere in there. Again, it depends on your model. Okay? When you're costing out your individual items, you're going to look at it by category. These are typical ranges. It, it doesn't mean that, that that's something that you have to do. It depends on, again, your brand, your market. Beverages usually fall into the lower end of the spectrum, where snacks and appetizers are right towards the middle. Sandwiches are on the higher end. Pizza can be higher if you're, bought in, if you're purchasing it already made, but if you're making it yourself, it's going to be on the low end of that spectrum. So there's a big difference. You really have to know your menu and you have to analyze it. So what is a standard recipe? This is an example of a standard recipe, an example of a burger. And everything on that burger goes into the, 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 uh, the recipe guide. So I know in this example, the, the bun, the patty, the cheese, and so on. Every item is on there, how much of it is on there, how much it costs. And then from that, I can get what my total cost is. When I decide what I'm going to charge, I have my cost of goods. And I also have my contribution margin on that. Contribution margin meaning how much am I actually making from this item. Okay, so the important thing with this is A, to do it, to do it thoroughly, to take the time to do it. Okay, uh, because that's, that's the upfront work that's involved with this. It takes a lot of time. Once you do this, then it's maintenance. You have to make sure, and a lot of it's easier nowadays. Your vendor probably has uh, online uh, pricing where you'll be able to update it each and every time through their system often. You don't always have to do it through an Excel spreadsheet. So this is one of the most important steps. You've got to measure and cost every ingredient in every menu item could be a daunting task. It's not hard to do, it just takes a lot of time. Then you want to set your brand appropriate pricing. By that I mean, what is your brand all about? What is the guest experience all about? Is it, is it sit down table service or is it more a counter dr driven service? What is the whole experience like? Again, think of food and beverage as a component of the, the guest experience. It could, it could elevate it or it can destroy it. So pay the appropriate amount of attention to it, set the appropriate pricing. If you've got a high functioning, high level guest experience, you probably can charge more for it. So don't just necessarily copy the guy down the street who may or may not have the same kind of business as you. Do your homework, do your market research, but understand who you are and stick with that because your target guest is the one you should be pricing it for and serving. The next step is just to generate a product mix report, and, and it's generally called a P-mix P report, and it comes right out of your POS system, and it's going to give you some basic information, and here's just a really quick one. It's going to tell you what it is, how many you sold during the period that you're looking at, what the cost is of that item, the total cost, what you're charging for it, in this case it says retail, what the total revenue is for that period, your cost that you ran for that item during the period, and then the percentage of sales for the department, in this case, this buffalo chicken wrap was 7% of the departmental sales, but it's less than 1% of the overall menu. Important thing to note, too, is total revenue. It can't be what you, you can't just take 143 and multiply it by your cost or your, your retail price because you have discounts, you have, uh, you know, all things that affect the, the price. You might have employee meals, things like that. So really, how much revenue did you get for it? That's what you actually, that's your actual, your your actual cost, theoretically, on this period is 33.3%. Doesn't mean that's what you actually ran, but according to your sales. So you have to generate a P-mix report. This is going to tell you what you sold, because this is going to be put into the menu engineering report that's going to give you the results that you need. So the step three is now that you have your menu, cost it out, you know what you sold, now you have to do a menu engineering report. And what that does is it takes some of those items, you're just going to enter in a few of them. You already know what the, the quantity sold are. You already know what the item cost is. You know your price. 
okay, the, the, when you per, put in your revenue and you put in your cost, it's going to give you the cost of goods. The rest of it gets calculated for you. What happens with this is it looks at the menu as a whole, and then it, it determines if it's a highly profitable item or a highly popular item relative to the rest of the menu, or is it a low in popularity or a low, low profit item. So it's going to segment every single restaurant item into that category. And that's where you see over on the right of the screen where it's doing it. So it, for instance, look at the menu mix category. And this CBS sandwich at first is high. That means that we sell a lot of them. And it's also in the contribution mar CM category, which is contribution margin, it's also high. So it's high, and it's a high, therefore it's a star. You look down the rest of the list and you can see a farmhouse burger is low in sales, but it's high in profit. Chicken wrap is high in sales, low in profit. Premium burger is low in sales and low in profit. So when you put your entire menu together, it will segment them this way for you. And it'll give you the classification. The categories are going to give you insight into each menu's perform I mean, item's performance. It tells you, OK, is this something that is, is it's a, it's doing good, it's a star, or it's a dog, it's not doing good, and how can I mix my menu up so I can be more profitable? So that's the third step. That's the fun part is how you see this is how they come out. Once you enter all that information is, you get a great look at your menu and how it's performing. So let me talk a little bit about each one of them. A star is a highly profitable and a highly popular item. And that's a winner. Don't change it. You want to feature it prominently on your menu and also on social media. Okay? Recommend it to guests. Okay? You may be able to take it up slightly in price if you know your market. Okay? Don't, don't be reckless with it. And it should remain popular. So know your market. But this is a star. Don't mess with it. Puzzles are they're low in popularity, but they're very profitable. So you may want to consider lowering the price. Tweaking the presentation or the flavor profile, you know, maybe uh, altering it that way. Uh, but monitor the results when you do it. Okay, review your menu description. Make sure it make, maybe you can make it more appealing by the way you describe it. Okay, have staff contests to increase the awareness of it so they can get that word out. It's highly remember it's highly profitable. You want to sell more, so see what you can do to make it sell more. The next one is a plow horse. It's very popular with the guests, but it doesn't make you much money. So it's a fan favorite. So be careful with it, though. If you raise the price, it might be price sensitive. Look and see if it's also in your market. Oftentimes, it's the same product as somebody else is selling. Uh, but take a look at it. Take your look at your portion sizes uh, and cost. If you can tweak it, maybe, but you really need to be careful with this one. You might want to use add-ons to improve the profitability of it, you know, like a soda or something like that. You can, you can group it. Or, or if you're selling a lot of it, maybe you can get better pricing from your vendor or find another vendor. But again, don't mess with the quality of it. It's a favorite. You don't want to disappoint people. So be careful what you do. Last, it's the dogs. The dogs are low in profit. They're low in popularity. Okay, they're not pulling their weight. It's something you need to consider removing it from your menu. Or if you really want to hang on to it, and it's important to trust your data. Don't go by your own gut feel. Oh, I really like that. I think it could sell. Don't do that. Trust in the data. It's telling you how your business is working. But if you really want to give it a shot, you know, maybe change the recipe, the presentation, the pricing, or just use it as a limited time offer once in a while or a special just to keep it fresh and going. So, so that's, those are the four categories uh, that you're going to look at. The last thing you're going to do is now that you have all that information, you want to adjust your menu. Okay, and then you, what are you going to add? What are you going to remove? What are you going to do with your pricing? Don't fall into the old traditional center trap of pricing once a year when your fall bowlers are gone. You probably want to look at your pricing at least twice a year, seasonally at, at, at worst. Okay, but look at your menu engineering on a monthly basis. Once you set it up, it's really not that difficult to continue to do it. It's all in the setup. Okay, so so with, to make this work for you, if you invest the time to do this, okay? That's the upfront thing. Make sure you have accurate information and you analyze on a regular basis to adjust your menu, and then that will increase your profits. Just the fact that you're paying attention to it and managing it's gonna do it. So this will, I guarantee you, this will increase your profits. So start thinking like the restaurant operators do. Your food and beverage operations should be a great source of revenue, a great source of profit, and a great, a great guest experience, but a great source of pride for your organization as well. Bart? Wow, JK, that's some incredible information, a lot of information to uh, digest in a short period of time. Uh, I do want to sneak in one question here is, because it's important for our, our viewers, uh, four great steps. 
Um, in your experience, which step do you see or where do you see centers struggle the most when they get started in this, this uh, process? Uh, it's, it's just that, getting started, step one. <laughs> to, that, it's intimidating to some uh, because there's a lot of work that goes into it. Or you may not think that, oh, I don't know if I can do that. It's really quite easy. Just look at the example we had in there. All you're doing is you're building a sandwich. You're building that menu item. You've got to go back in the kitchen and make it, which is fun. Go back and make it, price it all out, see what it should look like. That's the hardest part. Once you get started and you enter all that data, it's off to the races from there. Yeah, and you know, when you uh, look at the numbers, the examples you showed us uh, based on our business model, the financial impact, that's both uh, scary and exciting at, at the same time there yep. in, in doing that. So, hey, everyone, uh, great information. Uh, the good news is I, I want to share with you that if yourself or someone uh, from your team would like to take a deeper dive in this uh, menu engineering, the, this analytics, the four-step process, uh, JK has developed an incredible 30-minute course that's available through our on-demand, on online education and training program at bowlinguniversity.net. You can check that out. So as we wrap up another edition of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break, remember when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. We look forward to seeing you next week at 1015 Eastern for another great episode of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break. If you have any question about today's show or like more information at any time, you can reach any of us at education at bpaa.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24-7 by visiting bowlinguniversity.net. Until then, I'm Bart Berger. Remember, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next week.